Hi folks. I want to add a little bit of balance to this discussion about DRM as it pertains to ebooks, that's digital rights management, the anti piracy measure. That means if you buy a Kindle book, uh, you're locked into the Kindle ecosystem and can't simply just take that book and do anything you want with it. Um, um, I wonder, did you know this? But this is something I know because I've published a book on the Kindle store already. Um, when you go to publish it, you have to actually answer the question, do you want DRM on this book? Amazon do give publishers the choice. Any publisher out there can simply choose not to feature DRM on the book. And I didn't feature DRM on mine. So that's interesting, isn't it? It seems like the, the bulk of the blame here really needs to go on the publishing industry. Um, it may be that Amazon needed to have that feature just to satisfy the publishing industry. Uh, it is an anti-piracy measure, right? But it just provides a layer of inconvenience to the consumer. That's the real, the real issue here. Um, if we do want to be tied to Amazon products, it's inconvenient to have DRM on the books that we buy. Now, a few people have weighed in and said, don't you realize that when you when you click buy on a book on the Amazon store, you're not actually buying the book outright, you're buying a license to read the book under specific terms and conditions, right? As if you're the smartest person in the room and none of us really knew that. But listen, if you're seeing, <laughs> you're not really caring about that sort of a thing in some kind of important legal sense. And I'll just illustrate this, right? I picked a random CD here. There's, there's Genesis Invisible Touch. Great album. Picked a random CD out of my collection here. Let me get my glasses here. I'm going to read you the terms and conditions that are attached to the purchase of this physical product. Right, here we go. Warning. Copyright subsists in all recordings issued under this label. Any unauthorized rental, broadcasting, public performance, copying or recording in any manner whatsoever will constitute infringement of such infringement of such copyright and will render the infringer liable to an action at law scary right <laughs> so if i want to be able to like listen to this album on the move oh i want it on my mp3 player right how do i do that oh i put this i put it into my cd player on my computer and I use my Ripper software, iTunes or whatever will do it. You can even do it natively, I think, on Windows now. Uh, I'll create MP3 files. I'll pop them on my MP3 player and off I go. But I'm breaking the law. <laughs> oh, the cops are coming, right? You see how silly this is? If you spent your life constantly worrying about the small print on every consumer product, you'd be driven insane. So stop carrying on like you're the smartest person in the room or something. We all knew there were, there were licensing issues to do with, you know, here's the thing, right? When you buy a Kindle book, because there's DRM on it, Amazon can't really refer to this as an outright purchase. They can't because of the DRM, because there are restrictions, right? So that's why they're calling it a license rather than a purchase. But it's supposed to resemble an outright purchase. It's a license to be able to access that book that you bought indefinitely to the end of your life, be that 50 years time, as long as the Amazon store survives, which it probably will, right? So it's designed to resemble a purchase, but they just can't call it that. So the obsession with these little licensing restrictions that, oh, it's, it's criminal to take DRM off your ebook. It's a shameful thing, as someone said. Someone used the word shameful in the comments. Well, that's a bit like paying a little bit too much attention to these little small print things on a music album. Come on, we have all ripped CDs, haven't we? Well, unless you're very young. We've all owned CDs and we've ripped them. Why? So that we could pirate them. No, we rip them because it's convenient for us, right? So just the same with eBooks. 
Maybe I don't want to read the ebook on the Kindle. Maybe I want to read it on the Kobo or something else. We just want it to be more convenient for us. And those of us that are tech-savvy savvy enough, and we are a minority, those of us who are tech-savvy enough to do that, uh, we like that. And yes, it peeves us off that they're having too much control. So, at some point, things changed in the music industry. Originally, if you bought music from the Apple Store, you were absolutely tied to an Apple iPod, which was the original MP3 player that the Apple that Apple came out with. Right? You couldn't play music purchased in the iTunes Store on this little MP3 player because of the DRM restrictions. So, because there were a plethora of MP3 players out there of all sorts of brands, the inconvenience got to be too much. And eventually, I think, I believe it was Apple who spearheaded this. Their music became DRM free. And now it's the same on Amazon too. If you buy an album on Amazon, it's a DRM free MP3, right? So you can see that it matters, right? Because there are, there are other e-readers out there than the Kindle. We don't want to be tied to a Kindle product. We don't want to be tied to the Kindle app on a different product. We want the native e the native software that's on the e-reader that we buy because that's probably the best software for that particular brand, right? So this all matters if you care about consumer choice. Where is what is shameful about what I'm advocating here? I don't get it, right? I think you're deliberately misunderstanding what I'm talking about here. Now, the secondary issue about DRM and why it is a problem. Well, no, before I even get on to that. DRM was an anti-piracy measure, right? So, why do they not do it with MP3s anymore? Why do they not do it with music? Well, <laughs> the thing it is, you just, at some point, a publisher of any digital media has to realize, look, everything that gets published just gets pirated. It's a fact of life. Computers are really good at duplicating things. It's what they do. You've all done copy and paste with a file on your hard drive, haven't you? You can instantly duplicate anything. That's what computers are good at. So piracy is just going to happen and it's never going to be stopped. So it kind of makes no sense to punish the 99.9% of your, of your audience, of your consumers, punish them for something that's done by... 0.1% or 0.01% of the people who buy the music. Who, who buys music just so they can upload it somewhere on the internet and parrot it? Very few people, right? So let's not punish the majority for a problem cre created by a minority. You see? And I think that's the way things are, are understood now in the music industry. So that, that understanding of the way things are needs to move to books. Your book is just going to be parroted. It's a fact, regardless of what you do with DRM restrictions. It's going to get out there because computers reproduce things. And a certain segment of the population will be unethical. So it's just going to happen, right? So give us the convenience that we want. And everything's just the same. You know, people are still going to buy books. If you make it cheap and convenient to buy books, people will not turn to piracy. And that's how it works with music, you see? I mean, we all, back in the day, if you're as old as I am, you used to copy your friends' computer games back when there was floppy disks and whatnot. Nowadays, I'm a gamer, PC gamer on the Steam platform. I would never think of pirating a, a game because it's so super convenient on Steam to buy them. I have the confidence that there'll be no viruses attached and there are sales happening all the time. So if publishers get on board with that mentality, it all just works, you see? I remember J.K. Rowling, uh, this is way, way long time ago. It's one of the Harry Potter books. I don't remember which one. She made the decision not to allow the book to be released as an e-book, which was a frustration to the segment of her fans that preferred reading electronically, but there would be no official e-book uh, of a particular Harry Potter book. She did this because she thought she wanted to prevent piracy. She didn't realize your book is just going to be pirated. 
I could almost guarantee it that within a week of that Harry Potter book coming out, somebody somewhere had run it through a flatbed scanner, the physical book on the flatbed scanner, created an ebook of it and uploaded it to the usual piracy sites. That's just going to happen. So it made no sense to kind of punish a segment of her readership for something that was just going to happen anyway. You see what I mean? So none of this, this whole discussion is not about piracy, it's about convenience. And the other thing it's about is the fact that some of us have been burned by DRM, right, in one, in one shape or another. I have not been burned in the issue of books, but I'm also a digital movie collector and I have been burned in that sphere as well. Um, I used to use a platform called Blinkbox many years ago when this whole digital movie collecting thing was in its infancy. And I lost the series, what was it called? Um, the one with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Cosmos, Space Time Odyssey. I lost that. I paid about £12 for it and it disappeared uh, even before I'd watched it all because the Blinkbox platform went belly up. Now, they, they did allow us to migrate our purchased content to another platform called Rakuten, right? Um, but it would only legitimize items that were already available in the Rakuten store. So that one wasn't, so that just disappeared. Something I purchased just vanished into thin air. I was supposed to have an indefinite license to watch this for the rest of my life. In other words, a purchase, right? But it, it was gone, right? And then more recently than that, the movie Phantasm Ravager vanished from my Amazon library and trying to get Amazon to take action about it. It, it, it was something that was done in error. It wasn't that they lost the license for it. Um, I could tell that it was a mistake, that somebody, somebody had been fiddling with the database and made a mistake and a movie had disappeared. Um, there's a previous video about that if you want to watch it. Turns out, after me contacting Amazon and having three hair-pulling chats with them on three separate occasions, I finally got a response like about a month later, uh, which was an almost grammatically nonsensical response that basically said, this isn't something we did. Uh, it looks like the distributor of the video has, has messed it around. So that's Arrow Video. Arrow Video uh, fiddled with their database, did something that caused one of their movies to disappear from everybody's library. So Phantasm Ravager, everybody's lost it. Everybody who purchased it has lost it. They haven't even noticed. I can't even get in touch with them because in order to get in touch with Arrow, you have to set up an account on their website and I'm just not going through. So you know what I did? My friend has a massive Blu-ray library. I ripped the disc off his Blu-ray and took the DRM off it and I've now got Phantasm Ravager back again. Was I wrong to do that? Look, I bought it. I bought it. I was supposed to have an indefinite license to watch it for the rest of my life, which Arrow Video, in some stupid move, took away. So this is the problem with DRM. Mistakes happen. You can lose content that you bought, and you did buy it, right? It's supposed to resemble a purchase. So this turned into more of a rant than I expected it would. <laughs> anyway, I hope that clarifies some things about DRM and the whole issue of a purchase versus a license and why it actually matters, okay? And I'm hoping somewhere down the line that ebooks will be DRM free, the same way music is, the same way comics are, digital comics, on some platforms anyway. If you buy from Rebellion, there's no DRM in the comics that you buy, they're just PDF files and CBZ, CBR files. Um, the same is true on Humble Bundle when you buy things. Um, so there's a, there's a slow crawl towards the removal of DRM. Um, on a final note, it also looks like um, you still might be able to get your Amazon books downloaded after the 26th of February when the download button is removed. Someone pointed out that when you have the book downloaded onto your Kindle, you can plug the Kindle into your PC with a USB cable and see the contents and the book will be there. Now it's there in a funny format, not the usual AZW3 format. That is what you would have downloaded if you'd been able to click the button. 
Uh, it's in a funny format, but I believe there is a way to convert that within Calibre to a compatible format. So I think we still have options. But they are making things more inconvenient for us. Yeah, us, the technical users who care about stripping DRM. The minority of Kindle users. But you can see how much it matters by how many videos have been made about this, right? Anyway, we'll see what kind of reaction we get.